Let's find out what's happened. Alien Corey, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just put it down to a misclick, Cedric. It's fine. Don't worry yeah. about it, but I, we'll be there. We'll be there. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lower Round 2. I'm Ailey Loney alongside Corey Baumeister. And we are going to jump right into the thick of things here. Unfortunately, we're sending somebody else home. Mike Sigrist and Carl Sarep are duking it out for their tournament lives. Grixis Vampires versus Jund Midrange. Yeah, Corey, I'm... talk to me about this one, my friend. Well, first of all, I got to say, no good 2-3s? Are you kidding me? We got a good one in this deck for Carl. Briarbridge Tracker is an excellent 2-3. <laughs> Everyone at the desk, come on. Come on. But <laughs> yeah, as far as this matchup goes, getting back to this, it is just another one of these mid-range battles where there's no clear favorite. You know, it is mm -hmm. just going to be... I think Mike really told me this early on the day that if his removal spells line up against these other mid-range decks, he's going to have a good time. If they don't, he's not going to have a good time, to put it elegantly. Um, and that that's really what it comes down to, because the removal maybe is not as good as all the very powerful threats in standard yeah. right now. So you got to have them line up. Yeah, at the same time, though, you don't want to have too much reaction or reactionary yep. spells in your deck because you have to be, you know, dealing the beats as well as this Blood Tithe Harvester is going to kick things off here with three points of damage to Carl Serap. Down to 17 he goes. And what's the follow-up going to be here? Hmm, not going to keep up the Soul Transfer, so that's fine. We want to make sure that we can get Evelyn the Covetous down on turn four. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Trying to get Evelyn here uh, down in a couple of turns, but that Fable the Mirror Breaker that got taken with that duress was so big because that was going to be that way to go Fable, adjust your draw, and then hustle out um, some other plays here from Mike. Sure, so Fable the Mirror Breaker down here for Carl. He's going to make the little 2-2. Two -two. A Blight Stiff Pathway is the draw here for Mike Sigrist. So one step closer to getting Evelyn down. Now we, I don't know if we might see the Blood Tithe Harvester take care of this 2-2. Two -two. And it looks yeah. like that's the route we're going. So Blood Tithe Harvester can take care of that little guy. Yeah, now, now the question I was going to think is like, do we even just soul transfer to bring something back? That feels really <laughs> bad. But just starting with sacrificing this blood, just trying to find anything proactive at a three mana slot. Kaido Shizuki, Fable the Mirror Breaker is the second nice. card I was going to be saying. That was a big hit here for Mike to keep him in this game. Super nice. The soul transfer, just the one of in the main deck. Yep. If you have a copy of an enchantment and an artifact, which was one of the themes for Kamigawa, you'll be able to exile something and bring something back from the graveyard. So very nice piece of, uh, I don't know, value and removal. Kind of like yeah. a three for one in essence. Yeah, it's a really strong card. One of the few cards that you can deal with Thrag Tusk at home, as you were mm -hmm. saying, <laughs> the workshop. <laughs> um, but yeah, and you can even turn it on as soon as this turn by attacking with the shaman and then having the fable mirror breaker as that enchantment although that's not great because the only target is a cat so very likely to see an evelyn turn and now it really just comes down for mike do does mike want to discard one of these evelyns or just keep both of them just in case one of them dies because that really is mike's best card in the matchup yeah for sure and the soul transfer can also hit the pesky planeswalkers that we know is in the shun midrange deck. It's running mm -hmm. the red and seven. It's got Valky or Tybalt in here too. It's got the Loth Spider Queen, so plenty of excellent targets for it. But for now, I don't know about this duress. I think uh, it might be Evelyn time once we get this land down, or Ooh, the treasure okay. even that enables it. I was wondering if Mike was going to pull the trigger on this and attack with this because most of the time, if you animate a Zika's Chariot here. Mike's got to have a removal spell for it, right? Otherwise, this is just attack that goes right into a Zika's Chariot. So it's kind of hard to animate. And uh, yeah, wow, Carl decided to not do it. So this bluff by Mike <laughs> ended up working out excellently because if that got crewed up, it was just going to die. But instead, now Mike gets to go Evelyn and Duress this turn to clean up that Zika's Chariot. A really nice bluff there from Mike. <laughs> That's awesome. Soul Transfer would have been able to take care of the Chariot, but uh, Carl Sarep is well aware of that one, but uh, Essica's Chariot is going to get taken out courtesy of Duress here from Mike Sigrist. He does have a land to play still, so Evelyn is mm -hmm. still on the table courtesy of that little Goblin Shaman, so 
getting his job done before dying at the hands of a cat, you know, not the worst way to go, unless it's a yep. ferocious lion. <laughs> by a small kitty cat, though, th that's acceptable. That's fair. And yeah. man, I just, I just love, I want to go back to that play for one second. There's nothing better in a game of magic than successfully getting away with a bluff. You can't <laughs> do it often, that's for sure, but whenever it does work, that's always pretty sweet. <laughs> Tenacious Underdog is going to get blitzed out from the graveyard here, paying the two life, but you're going to see these mid-range decks quite happy to punch each other in the face, or punch themselves in the face, I should say. <laughs> yeah. But something's going to get eaten up here, courtesy of Evelyn, the covetous. Yeah, and especially Carl noticed that Mike discarded the Evelyn that was the known information. So this mm -hmm. Evelyn is not clear, even though you got to assume if you're discarding that extremely powerful card, it's probably for a reason uh, since it's so good in this matchup. For sure. Now, again, you don't really want to kill the Tenacious Underdog as it is going to die in the end step if it, if it dies in combat. There's another spell drawn that could potentially be played in the main phase. So I wouldn't be surprised to see just Ezekiel's Chariot Ooh. locked here. Ooh, what do we find? Lovely. Some big hits here, some absolutely Jeez. huge hits. And now this is the spot where Mike has to worry, like, do you have a removal spell? I don't believe, yeah, there's still four Volted Surge. So it's trying to play around that. Mike might not block at all here because that one unknown card that we know is a Proving Ground could be a Volted Surge. And then all of a sudden, Mike is just left with Soul Transfer and has to just bring this back, I guess. But instead could have a turn where you get to play Blood Tithe Harvester, find land number four and unleash the Inferno, Inferno on Carl's upkeep or combat or really anything. So a big yeah. shift here and a decision of what Mike's going to do. Mike's had a healthy life total too, so you can go to 13 here and decides to do it. Yep, He's going to do just that. And what I love about Unleashed Inferno against these mid-range matchups is most of the time there are targets, you know, so you kill something on the battlefield that's annoying you and then you get to clear up the Essica's Chariot or the Wedding Invitation or whatever else is on the battlefield that needs to get gone. So it's super versatile and I love it. Absolutely, and that land is a little reassuring here because it's a bit of a gamble if you go Blood Tithe Harvester and you do not hit a land for Unleash the Inferno. You feel a little <laughs> silly, but now you can kind of slam that down, see if you hit a land. If you do hit a land, great. Oh, I guess you can't play. You can only play one thing a turn, so you'll be playing your pathway from your hand anyways, but might as well play it's it first instant, to uh, get some information. So yeah, you, you can... should be able to play it next turn, right? Yeah, you can play the land off Blood Tithe Harvester if you find it off Evelyn, is what I was saying, uh, since you can only okay. play one thing a turn. Uh, so you'll have sure, to sure. play this pathway anyways. But yeah, you get to unleash the Inferno on Carl's turn for sure. <laughs> it's so fun. And I think I saw a Corpse Appraiser and a Jun Triome as the card that's going to be added to Evelyn's coin purse. Um, for future <laughs> turns. <laughs> How does she keep all these massive things in her purse? Oh, uh, no kidding, right? More news at eight. <laughs> Unleash the Inferno on the upkeep. Reflection of Kiki Jiki. I don't think you're long for this world, my friend. Yeah, and this is just the point where Mike is realizing, like, is there anything that punishes me for Unleash the Inferno a little bit later? And the only punishing case is Reflection of Kiki Jiki copying a cat or something like that. Um, you know, either way, if you unleash the Inferno now, Carl could crew the chariot, but of course that chariot was going to die anyways. Uh, so not that big of a problem. There's the possibility to clone the chariot in response just to get the extra cat value down and have an attacker for the turn to make more copies of things. If he wanted, but let's see, yep. let's see when Mike decides to pull the trigger here on this unleash the Inferno. Yeah, going to be an interesting spot here. Of course, if Carl goes to crew, um, you know, at the beginning of combat before cats get copied, that's going to be an automatic pull the trigger on this. And it might just be here so that Blood Tithe Harvester can't crew. But yeah, once again, it's going to destroy the chariot anyway. So it just really doesn't matter. Just cast the powerful <laughs> card here. <laughs> and my mistake, it is a non-legendary. So cat car is not an option here, but can make another cat. Who doesn't want three cats? Yep, fair enough. Fair enough. Who's a good kitty? <laughs> and there goes the chariot. There goes Kiki Jiki. So just slowly whittling away 
at the permanence on the battlefield here for Carl Sarep. So Sigurd's doing a pretty good job here of just controlling this battlefield. Still has that soul transfer that is known in hand here for Carl Sarep, or for Mike Sigurds, I should say. On the other side of things, just a Zeator's Proving Ground and a Voltage Surge. Yep, absolutely. And with that Voltage Surge, you can kind of combo this. You actually still need some more help. You need another artifact where, uh, I mean, I guess you can sack Blood Tithe Harvester and then Voltage Surge to be able to deal with this Evelyn. But yeah, since it finally blocked now, Voltage Surge is able to deal with this. But with that yeah. Soul Transfer in hand, you actually have this ultimate value turn <laughs> where Sigurus feels pretty pretty good about letting it die because Soul Transfer has Kiki Jiki, Reflection of Kiki Jiki, and the Blood Token to be able to kill something and bring Evelyn back here. Yeah, so he's not too sad to see Evelyn go down. But now we don't have a token or have the uh, artifact on, on the board. So it's just going to be the reflection that gets dealt with. Evelyn gets to stick around one more turn. And that's kind of bad news because she can just go get more vampires and the more vampires can find even more vampires. So this is a runaway value train that Carl Sarep is going to have to derail as soon as he can. Yeah, Carl decided to just let Evelyn live there and kill the enchantment so that Soul Transfer can't get back Evelyn and deal with something. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that solves one of the problems, but it is for sure not solving the main problem, which is still Evelyn. And now at some point, yeah. if Evelyn does die, the Soul Transfer is still there to bring it back. Yep, and there's another enchantment. Speaking of pesky... Permanence, Meat Hook Massacre, the big bad of this weekend, it seems, has uh, it's been do or die for plenty of players in different situations. So find that card or death. <laughs> yeah, especially in Historic. We saw, you know, the trifecta <laughs> of Witches Oven, Cauldron Familiar, and Trail of Crumbs uh, doing some absolute work with the help of that card. Doing some great work in Standard as well. An extremely mm -hmm. powerful addition to these uh, Black Midrange decks. Yeah, so we can go second Corpse Appraiser now here, too. Also, we've been managing to keep control of the uh, underdogs on the other side of the battlefield. He's now going to have to chew on some of his own stuff here if he wants to keep looking at the cards on top of the library. So there goes some more stuff. Some more things exiled. Ooh, Corpse yeah. Appraiser again. Tenacious Underdog. Kaito Shizuki. Yeah, <laughs> let's just keep this train rolling. Yeah, we definitely saw a lot of going off in uh, David Inglis's match with Jeskai <laughs> Storm. This is going off for the Grixis mid-range deck, though. Getting this kind of value train where you're getting triggers off Corpse Appraisal that also triggers Evelyn. This is, you know, a mid-range player's dream. You know, Reed Duke oh, yeah. is loving every second of this uh, right it's now like, with this kind of value. Just look, look at, at the at value! Yeah. <laughs> look I mean, at that. Geez, like. <laughs> Infernal Cross, Voltage Surge are at the ready there. On Carl Sarap's turn, he's going to go to Zeator's Proving Ground. Now, this is exactly what you want to see if you're Mike Sigrist. There's a Riveteer's Charm, which is a decent enough answer to Evelyn, as it can force the sacrifice of the highest CMC thing. But we know that there's a Soul Transfer in hand. And I'm pretty sure he can find an enchantment to be able to do both if he wants to. But yeah, Evelyn's just going to keep coming back. Or just no problem at just using this as return Evelyn. You know, you don't even care yep. to deal with any creatures. Uh, making no. sure you just get back Evelyn is going to win Mike the game outside of some ridiculous combination of draws that probably involve Tybalt to start, mm. you know, then maybe Ren and Seven and some other powerful Planeswalkers. You know what the gross thing is as well in this situation? Uh, if he had found, or if he does find another Meat Hook Massacre now, he'd only lose his Blood Tithe Harvester. Yeah. Like, <laughs> these these three toughness creatures, <laughs> like they match up so well against most of the others in this metagame. Yeah, absolutely. One of the main reasons for Corpse Appraiser, I'm sure, you know, we even saw Jan Merkel, um, the end boss of this tournament, playing four um, Shock Flame Bless Bolt in the sideboard. You know, neither Mike Sigrist or Jan Merkel were expecting to play against each other's decks. Jessica Hinata or Grixis Vampires were not really known quantities going in. So tough to play around. And that's what Team Channel Fireball found a hole in what other removal people are using. A lot of Vanishing Verse and a lot of Voltage mm -hmm. Surge. Corpse Appraiser dodges both of them. But look at all my gold creatures, Corey. You cannot vanishing burst these. That's probably what Evelyn sounds like. Okay, all right. That was a that was a good uh, good voice over there. 
I mean, she loves gold, right? That's why she's covetous. She's just going to steal all the things. There is definitely a lot of things that she is coveting, for sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially all in this right. game. Like, this is probably the most I've seen Evelyn going off, like, having that Jeez, many yeah. cards. It's just a must-answer threat so early on that you usually don't see it get to this point because, well, you have to kill it, you know? And, and otherwise, <laughs> this happens. So we did use the Riveteer's Charm for Cause the Wrap. He's digging for more cards, though, finds another charm, finds a hive, as well as a voltage surge. So those are available to him this turn. And he needs some stuff. He needs removal or dudes down on this battlefield because otherwise he's going to be a little dead. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we're just kind of going through the motions here with this much value and that soul transfer to back it up. It really has to be some combination of deal with Evelyn and then duress away the soul transfer. But we did see that one of duress that's in Carl's list already be cast really early on on this game. Mm -hmm. So now we'll see the Riveteer's charm number two. Take care of Evelyn the Covetous. Eh, not much of a biggie. How much damage do we have? We've got three, six, nine, ten, eleven. There is a copy of Voltage Surge to protect against the attack, but it can only kill the Tenacious Underdog, which it still feels bad because when it dies, it draws more cards. So, you know, Siggy is firmly in the driver's seat at this point, looking very good here to pick up the first game against Carl's Rep. Yep, a big difference in Sigrest, you know, going for it against um, Shota a little earlier in this event versus now. There's no real... I'm going to die on the crackback in this scenario. It's just like, play the cards. This is just kind of going <laughs> through the motions at this point. Yeah. Sigris knows there's probably nothing that Carl can do here. No, doesn't look like it. Beside you who endures, it's an excellent card. It's a staple in plenty formats at this point, but uh, unfortunately, it's not a miracle worker. As Kaito Suzuki goes digging, finds a hive of the eye tyrant, and that... Looks like it's going to be all she it's wrote gotta, for game number one. It's got to be Meat Hook, you know, dealing with this hive and then getting a <laughs> Meat Hook, which will gain three life and that gets you out of range of Tenacious Underdog. That's step one to not die immediately. Mm -hmm. Is it? And no. Nope. <laughs> well, Takanuma can bring something back. Is it anything relevant? Does it keep him alive? Definitely not. All these questions nope. need to be answered. <laughs> Yeah, nope, not going to do it here. Looks like we're going to be going to game number two, yep. and absolutely, this is the el another elimination match. Uh, winner moves on to still have a fighting chance in this event, and loser is done. Yep, got two chances, two lives to live in this top eight. As soon as you've lost twice, you get to, I mean, go home. They're already at home, but you get to go and chill <laughs> and watch the rest of the tournament, which is exactly a very good uh, consolation prize. But what is a good consolation prize is that every single person who remains now is in the world championships. So, yeah, you can definitely walk away with your head held high with that consolation prize. Oh, yeah. That is exactly what every Magic player aspires to get to is that Hallmark tournament. And, you know, you hold your head high thinking that you're going to be playing there. And then next week begins. All right. Time to try to win it and try to mm -hmm. get some testing plans arranged. Yep, get your testing teams together, start playing the heck out of whichever format it's going to be. I don't think we have <laughs> all too much information about it right now, but yeah, just keep your finger on the pulse of what's happening in competitive magic as both these players work on their sideboarding. Anything stand out to you here, Corey? Yeah, nothing too crazy that really stands out to me, except that Carl is taking out all of the Blood Tithe Harvesters, where Siggy is leaving all of them in, saying something about maybe play draw, um, but also Carl's on the play, so if you ever want that card, it's probably when you're on the play, um, you know, a little bit configuration of, of what you want in the matchups, but just a lot bigger. Both decks are going a lot bigger. You see that third Evelyn coming in, another soul transfer for the long game. Even in some counter spells and uh, you know a, a limited last pick a null coming in uh, to deal with azika's chariot and stuff that card has been impressive and it was one of the main reasons that team channel fireball wanted to be grixis instead of jund because uh -huh. well duressing away a chariot is all fine and good but you can't duress the top of the deck and the first time you duress mm -hmm. miss they top deck a bomb and you don't have an annul to deal with it it kind of feels bad and that's why they went with uh, a little bit more of the blue theme that's a very good reason to annul yeah. 
is the kind of card, kind of, it's not as bad as getting got by a spell pierce or dwarf disruption. You know, it's a very specific card, obviously used for the fables of the mirror breakers and yeah. the meat hook massacres and whatever else these yeah. mid-range decks are rocking, <laughs> but uh, it's a nice inclusion here in this list. Or the ultimate feels bad that's going to age me a bit is if you get force bite. You know, that's, uh, <laughs> that was the ultimate feels bad there. <laughs> I, ha I have heard of this card. Don't ask me yeah. what it does, though. I couldn't tell you. It is one blue counter target spell unless you pay one. Okay. So it's so Dwari disruption, disruption, but for one. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay. All right, all right, all right. So it's, uh, Dwari disruption is worse for spell. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> yes, 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 absolutely. So a rough scenario there for Carl. Carl's first hand was just a lot of lands and a couple big spells, one of them being Velky, so truly wanting to be a seven drop. Shipped it back, uh, you know, probably a close keep because you do want to be making your land drops in these mid-range battles, uh, but ships it back for a better hand and then got really punished by an unplayable hand at six. But at least Bankbuster was a very good draw to keep Carl in this. Yep. Reckoner Bankbuster, similar to the Maze Mind Tome, but it gets to hit things too, which is kind of nice. Yeah. As, uh, we're going to get things underway here with a Bloodthirsty Adversary. Not something you really want to play on turn two, but yeah, I mean, these <laughs> decks just want to beat the living daylights out of each other, so let's get smacking. Yeah, especially when your opponent mulligan to five on the play, you got a sense that no matter what, their hand has to be slightly weaker. So might as well yeah. just start getting a clock so you can pressure that, especially just in case their hand is non-functional. Now, Carl's mm -hmm. hand doesn't have anything great to play next turn unless we get a land and a chariot is just an excellent play. Doesn't find yep, it. Yeah, that would be the ideal situation, unfortunately. Not going to happen as Infernal Grasp is the draw. So Reckoner Bankbuster gonna go digging for some more cards and there's a Meat Hook Massacre. So if this board does get a little out of hand, he can work towards that, but might need some help mm -hmm. in the mana generation department. Infernal Grasp, negate up. That's gonna make Sarap's life even more difficult though, depending on what Sarap's next play is. Yeah, absolutely. We see a little bit of money in the bank with those bank busters with one more <laughs> card to draw, but Evelyn is looking to take some coins here pretty soon, as far, as soon as mm -hmm. next turn. And, it, you know, I mean, that was a big draw to be able to maybe play Chariot. But now that Carl found land number four on this turn, Mike found the negate just in time to be able to counter that and then play into Evelyn. So everything kind of worked out so far for Mike uh, with that sequence of draws. Oh, yeah, he's got his foot in the gas and he's not letting up now. There is the option to unleash the Inferno or Infernal Grasp. Mm -hmm. and just try and hope that Sigurus plays out and taps out so that you could get something uh, meaningful down on this battlefield because, mm -hmm. yeah, Isika's Chariot into a negate, that pretty much just smells like it's going to be over here. Yeah, I think I would have jammed there too. You know, you just, you've already mulliganed to five. You got to hope some things go right. And, uh, mm. you know, in an ideal world, of course, you wish Mike didn't have the negate, but sitting around and just trying to, you know, use the powerful yeah. removal spell of Unleash the Inferno on a 2-2 is not great. And just drawing a card off Bankbuster is not ideal either on turn four. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, rough spot there for Carl. And unfortunately, it's not the kind of deck to go slow against, you know, because, I mean, what, eight damage already just from one creature alone? Down to 12, Reckon a Bankbuster is doing its best, but it's going to... Not have that it's not gonna have that ability to to do that anymore yep exactly that's out of cards but it does bring some gifts on its final uh activation there which is going to be quite helpful um but now you know i'd be shocked if we didn't see evelyn to start the party off here you know luckily for carl carl does have the answer you know does have uh -huh. plenty of answers actually has three of them three of them yep <laughs> So, you know, as far as this looks right now, Evelyn's going to be great. It's going to get some hidden value um, that it's not really going to be able to cast the next turn. So as long as Carl leaves up mana to deal with Evelyn and deal with the second Evelyn, Carl's not looking so bad here. <laughs> yeah, he has three answers for the two Evelyns that we do see. It's just now any, meeny, miny. Which one do we pick, you know? Yep. Infernal Grasp, Charm. Looks like it's going to be Charm to start just to get that first copy of Evelyn off the battlefield. Draw step for Mike Sigrist. He yields him a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. That'll be interesting to see what Mike does here because one play you can make, you could just cast Evelyn, maybe hope to mill a land and get some value that way, or just cast Fable, leave up some disruptive spells and uh, see what's up there. Or the third option of just 
land go, play Evelyn at end step. <laughs> so three pretty good options that none of them are really clear, obvious best plays. What we have seen, though, is players really like Jam and Fable the Mirror Breaker, so that might be a consideration here for Sigrus this turn. Just to get that rocket, find a couple extra cards. He does also have that Takanuma Ban and Mire, which is another way to get cards back from the graveyard, so... You know, if you do have to ditch this Evelyn for some reason, then you're good to go. He's going to play that land, though, and keep up the two removal spells to react to whatever Carl does next. Which player mulligan to five again? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, well, that Bankbuster did a good job. It did exactly. a really good job. I mean, Falsarab it, it, had it, to lose half his life, but, you know, it's okay. Exactly. You know, I mean, when one card draws three cards, that's one way to draw two extra cards to unmulligan <laughs> a, a mulligan to five. So, yeah, a really nice sideboard card. And, and you're right. We've seen a card kind of like that in the past. Maze Mind Tome be kind of a, a mid-range, you know, mirror breaker um, uh, in, yep. in a sense where it kind of fills the similar role right now. Really powerful effect. Yeah, and a lot of these mid-range decks look to cards that have that sort of effect, like Kaito Shizuki mm -hmm. is another one, you know? They're able to oh. just get you back in a game that was otherwise lost. You know, if you see a, an aggro deck, for example, multi five, chances are game's over unless they have the absolute nuts in the hand that they do keep. We're going to see Unleash the Inferno here, deal two damage as well as take care of that enchantment. Now, if we had killed that goblin with our own Infernal Grasp, would Kikijiki... The reflection stay. If or sorry, the fable of the mirror breaker. Yeah, if you if you do kill your own card, that does prevent it. But um, Sigris okay. deciding that it is not worth it. But duress here being an insanely good draw at being able well, to yeah. take this only answer to Evelyn. Now we're gonna see if Sigris goes for that because I mean, there's good threats here too. Mm. And Meat Hook Massacre can actually kill Evelyn as well. Just you know, only mm. at. Uh, uh, sorcery speed so now it's a question of mike's like okay can i just try to win with evelyn and take infernal grasp or do you have to take something extremely powerful like ren and seven which mike does not have a very good answer to infernal grasp is not ideal against you know one giant tree folk and then you wait a couple <laughs> of turns while you get a bunch of lands off ren and then make another one so i think yeah. you just have to take ren here but we'll see Nope. So he's going for the right. This is a problem now card in the Infernal Grasp so that Evelyn will survive when it gets flashed in. What is the follow up play here from Carl, who's doing a very good job of getting his footing back in this game? He's at eight life, but his hand is pure gas, boring one land. Yeah, I was going to say, here's when the mind games comes in and be like, Mike didn't take this. Clearly, he has an answer for it. And then he's <laughs> like, ah, if he does, shrug, play it, you know? And yeah. I love that play from Carl. Like, uh, you know, you just you got to get something big going, and yeah. you're able to play two threats here. Um, everything kind of coming up, Carl. You also have a Den of the Bugbear in the lands, too, so a ton of threatening stuff on Carl's board. Yep. So on end step, we're going to see Evelyn the Covetous flash in. Let's see what goodies we find off the top of the library, along with the remaining ones. Check for traps. Ooh. Fable the Mirror Breaker, Tenacious Underdog, and Briarbridge Tracker. What? Oh, look Jeez. at this. Okay, so Mike can go check for traps, take Meat Hook Massacre, Vaulted Surge the 2-2, Infernal Grass the 7-7, seven, seven, attack down Ren. Uh-huh. Okay, I guess I guess the one thing that does stop that is Bankbuster can crew. So it's not yes. a, it's not foolproof to be able to just attack down, but the thing, it can crew, and then you still just attack Blood Tithe Harvester and Evelyn to Ren. You're not risking uh -huh. Evelyn dying. Blood Tithe Harvester will have to die um, for all this stuff to happen, but that is an option right now to kind of leave Carl without any meaningful <laughs> things on the battlefield or in hand. Oh, my goodness. We know oh, there's I a trap. So. Seen it. It's like he was <laughs> listening to you there, Corey. It's just well, like, oh, gonna, yeah, that sounds like a see. great idea. Let's do that. <laughs> all right, let's see Let's see if we can check all those things off the boxes. Oh, check off all those boxes, shall we? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, he's going for it. Okay, okay. Yeah, I like this to start with this. Now you get to see if Bankbuster crews or not. And if mm -hmm. it does, you know, you still probably have to do that play of killing Shaman as well. But if for whatever yeah. reason, um, you know, Carl decided to not do that, I guess you can still, um, you know, crew with this Shaman, but... Yeah. I mean, heck, this still gets ran off the board, which is pretty darn good indeed. So yeah. 
In goes the cavalry. Evelyn the Covetous, along with the bloodthirsty adversary, she's gonna get munched by the Reckoner Bankbuster, but bye-bye, Planeswalker. <laughs> oh, take that card, take that card, take it, take it, do it. All right. Go on. Yes, Come I on, know Mike. there's cooler things to play, but take it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I can I can no matter what be happy with this turn. You know, Mike Siggers chose Corey. chose a player oh. that I agreed with here. That's a big draw. Now the question Sheesh. is, does Carl you know trade that in to try to get something to deal with Evelyn? Because you see these three cards, they're still going to be cast. And that's yeah. going to bring up some advantage, but Azigas Chariot's too good to pass up here. Yeah, I mean, you don't send that away. Come on, it's the kitty car. <laughs> exactly. It makes cats. It gives you a good blocker. <laughs> I like the cause of it. It makes cats. I mean, oh. so there, there we go. Yes, that's all the reasoning <laughs> you need. Don't argue. <laughs> I won't. I won't. Now we'll see what Mike wants to do. You're very much incentivized uh, to play one of these cards. Well, because your other play is Evelyn, which is not so great when you have an Evelyn. Yeah. But that's besides the point. So you can play Briarbridge Tracker and then sacrifice the clue immediately, maybe mm -hmm. to find something to do with your mana. Um, not ideal because one mana, you know, usually you're only finding Duress or Volted Surge, neither of which are yeah. that effective on this battlefield right now. But what's nice now is, is he kind of has time to, you know, yeah. play all these cards out. There's no immediate threat here from Carl Sarap. The biggest threat right now, I think, is if he just goes absolutely wide and crazy with creatures mm -hmm. next turn and just starts pummeling the living daylights out of Mike. I like not sacrificing the treasure now. The upside of it is pretty small. The upside is like you you draw land that you maybe want to play. Um, mm -hmm. And the downside is maybe Evelyn gets dealt with next turn. And then all of a sudden you don't have a 4-3 to block Azika's Chariot. And it just kind of gets to, to go ham and just keep making cats. Mm-hmm. So we're not going to see an attack there. We're just going to build our battlefield. I think Carl's idea is, okay, top of my library is not playing nice. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Question. If he makes a copy next turn of the ref of the bank buster, does he get the counters on it to draw cards? Ooh, that is a good question. I would, I would, ass I would assume not. But oh, I on. I could be wrong on that, but I would assume you do not. That I'm sure does enter in chat with three, knows. That does enter Come with on, three Brainiacs, charge counters on it. No, I think it actually nope. might. Yes, nope. Well, that's very helpful, chat. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, let's see what we got here. We got Riverglide Pathway, Xander's Lounge, and a backup of Evelyn. That is an impressive line, though. If you're able to animate Bankbuster and then at an end step, you know, copy Bankbuster, be able to draw some cards off that, that is pretty important. <laughs> Chat's not sure. It's a 50-50. There we go. That seems to be the theme this weekend. It's 50-50 if that works. So if Carl doesn't do it, it doesn't work, and then we will have our answer because I'm pretty <laughs> sure he would have tested that out. <laughs> yeah, okay. I would think it doesn't put counters on it. It was, is my educated guess here, but I really am not 100%. All right. Judge, anyone? <laughs> or Serge Jaeger later. But for now, we have to deal with the creatures on the battlefield. Xander's Lounge is going to likely get cycled away here. So leaving up the mana just in case we find a one mana spell. Anything good off the top here? Okay, well, I think we're going to figure it out right now. It looks like that bank buster is trying to get crude. Maybe this will answer our question. Well, my question. Let's just ping Carl. I mean, we know Carl hey. knows. <laughs> that was a big yeah. draw. Hey, Carl, I know you're super busy right now, but uh, <laughs> question for you there, bud. Yeah, no, let's not do that. Okay, big draw here. Voltage Surge to be able to just clean up this reflection. We're probably going to see some response here, but Carl has to be careful because Carl is at eight. You have that den as a blocker as well, but mm -hmm. Brybridge Tracker being a big creature and the fact that Tenacious Underdog is one of the cards that could be blitzed out of Evelyn's coin purse here and hey! really cause some damage. Dang Thank it, you, yeah, Carl. you're right. Yes, there Questions we go. Questions <laughs> answered. It does get the counter, so we will get a card. Cool. Oh, Wait that's a, a big draw. Wait a minute. I did, did Carl just... <laughs> uh lose himself the game here because this vehicle is going to be not a creature after this and there's now there's no mana to activate den and there's eight power here oh wait i was complete i thought this was mike sigrid's end step 
No, this was Carl's end step. <laughs> no. I mean, I think Carl just left himself dead on board to these creatures. Yep, with the tenacious underdog getting blitzed in. This is bad news bears for Carl. Oh, that makes me so sad. I thought we saw something cool there, and this was the comeback story we all wanted, but nope. <laughs> He's just unfortunately a little dead. Can he activate the den? No, no, that's no be because... Tapped. Because that uh, bank buster got activated, you could kind of wait with the bank buster and activate it at the end of Mike Segrist's turn, uh, but did it right yep. away here. But now, once again, Mike is not, you know, in all systems go territory. We'll see mm -mm. if, I mean, at 15, Mike is probably going to go for it here, but it's not an auto go for it uh, because if there is a removal spell, then, well, Carl gets to go again, but yeah. Yep. Unfortunate for he did it for science, okay? We had a question, he answered it for us, but that is unfortunately Carl Seraps end to the tournament. Mike Sigrist though continues 